the format of being robot. I can never go back to Cartoon Network. I can no longer look at it the same way again. After all that they've done, do they think that all is forgiven? One thing that keeps coming back to me was an old kids channel known by the name of Boomerang. It was owned by the same people who ran Cartoon Network, so it's basically promoted as a sister channel. Kids WB was taken over by 4Kids TV, who used to air their shows on both networks before they went bankrupt. Boomerang was the in-case-of-emergency box used for people who enjoyed watching reruns of the Powerpuff Girls and Teen Titans when they didn't show up on Cartoon Network. It was also the place where they would discover shows that aired before they were even born. I enjoyed watching cartoons a lot as a child, many of which aired on Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. I also enjoyed watching Boomerang, which was flooded with Scooby-Doo, The Jetsons, and The Flintstones, all produced by Hanna-Barbera, a primary studio at the Warner lot. It isn't hard to guess that one of my favorite cartoons of all time, was Tom and Jerry. It was a cat and mouse cartoon, first of its kind, that was first created in the 40s, but changed development teams over the years while still being distributed by MGM. Cartoon Network didn't show up in 1992, when I was 12, allowing HB cartoons to air on TV, including Tom and Jerry. Along with them came new originals for the channel, like Dexter's Laboratory, Cow and Chicken and Johnny Bravo. The library was quickly growing at that point in history. 2010 marked the beginning of the end for Seaton. Popular shows from left to right were being swallowed by the all-new Seaton Reel, a live-action block which then took up the time slots for the recently cancelled series that I had once loved. When Seaton Reel was removed, the network tried in all of its power to regain public trust by rebooting some of their shows, but by then the damage has already been done. Many of the network's old development team has been kicked out, never to be seen again. I figured it'd be best to just move on from it and go to other channels at the time, like Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. A few episodes of Boomerang shows began popping up on YouTube as well, so I decided to go to that for my entertainment alongside television. I was browsing the internet one night for some nostalgia fuel cartoons, when I came across a video simply labeled, Deforestation of Jerry. There was no description, but I immediately began to see this as a fan project of Tom and Jerry. The thumbnail showed a poorly drawn Microsoft Paint picture of Tom holding Jerry against a fiery background. It almost looked like it was produced and directed by children. What was even stranger was the title of the video. Jerry is a mouse, and deforestation means clearing out a forest of its trees, so the title makes no sense, unless deforestation had another definition. As I clicked on the video, I soon realized what deforestation meant in the other context. The video began with a light blue screen with some degrading at the top, as if it was filmed from a VHS. In came the yellow text, Deforestation of Jerry. The words Nicholas Fedorov faded in afterwards, alongside Tom and Jerry in the same crude style as the thumbnail. I assumed that Nicholas Fedorov directed the video. In the background was a funky keyboard lead too with slight distortion. It wasn't loud, yet I felt like there was a ringing in my ears. The scene faded to the characters against a yellow background with squares. Both of the characters sounded like robots, implying that Fedorov did this on a computer. The robotic voices were just as irritating as the music, and they were so garbled that I could understand a few words. Even worse, this was the second time the characters talked, since the movie back in 92. Through narration, Tom and Jerry both explain what they are going to do. Tom wants to get rid of Jerry, while Jerry wants to get cheese, claiming they contain vitamin B12 that is nutritious for mice. The scene then goes to a shot of Jerry's mouse hole, but it was made out of CGI. It was poorly designed, resembling the door to a medieval room with the text mouse hole written next to it. Jerry walks out of the hole, still in 2D and continues to explain his love for cheese. Images representing Jerry's explanation appear at the same time. For example, when Jerry talks about the vitamin B12, it is represented by a pill. Tom sets up a CGI cage to lure Jerry. Here, his hand is now CGI as well, poorly designed with only three misshapen fingers and long claws. Tom puts cheese into the cage, but leaves it open for Jerry. 
Jerry walks into the cage, now poorly drawn in 2D. The cage somehow shrinks as the word rats pops up on screen, and Jerry tries to escape, but to no avail. The fiery background from the thumbnail fades in, alternating colors between yellow and red. Tom rises with Jerry in his hand, explaining his evil plot to rid Jerry. Tom's dialogue is subtitled, but I didn't see a button for closed captioning. Jerry begins sweating, represented by water droplets on his head. Tom grabs a knife and saws Jerry, causing blood to leak out. I literally vomited at this point. Loud human screams and choking began playing, as Jerry is sawed by the waist, by the torso, and finally, by the head. When Tom gets to the head, his knife turns CGI, and there is now a poorly drawn shot of the kitchen on fire. The annoying music fades out, and is replaced by a beautiful harp music and a CGI blue sky with clouds. There appears to be a CGI model of Jerry as an angel, but he looked terrifying. He had a white human-like body, his ears were larger, his snout was smaller, and his tongue was used to the rest of his mouth. The most striking part was the eyes. Oh god. They were human, bulging, and red. Jerry had a golden halo, which was something hilarious compared to the rest of the monstrosity. The camera panned up to Jerry. He began speaking. His dialogue is more understandable, and all the more horrifying. Tom, you heard me. You will pay for killing me. I must not take you with me. That's all the dialogue I can muster. Other than that, Jerry is muttering an intelligible nonsense, while slowly blinking his cold staring eyes. The keyboard music from earlier came back, now more distorted and more irritating than ever. It fades to what appears to be Tom's room. I say, what appears to be, because this was nothing compared to everywhere else Tom was. Tom was in a green bed, now in CGI with blue eyes. He is just as crudely designed and pale as Jerry. The word Tom is written on a wall nearby. Tom is now more human sized than ever. There is a bedside table next to him with a lamp and drawers. Jerry flies up to him with a spear, his body now looking like a giant white pill with limbs. He begins to stab Tom in the eye with the spear, the latter opening his mouth to scream, but is muffled out by the keyboard. There is no blood this time around, just the sight of Tom silently yelping in the dead of night. There are several shots of this happening, with the last one aimed upwards at Jerry, slowly panning toward his face until it filled the screen. The video ended with the fiery background from before, but this time with a still image of the duo's heads, with Tom's head looking torn. Below is one last phrase that gave me a lot of dread. There is no hope. None at all. I chuckled at the none at all part, but at the same time creeped out because of the message. The credits rolled. It just showed what appeared to be a great picture of Fedorov, with text crediting him as the animator and musician for the video. It seemed like it was all done by this one man. I can't describe what I just saw, let alone my reaction for it. I have to say, while one man can be very talented at his work, his ideas can be very messed up. Deforestation clearly demonstrates that in its own twisted dark way. I contacted CN about the short a few weeks later, and this is what they said. Dear Redacted. Thank you for asking us about this demented short you believe it is. It's kind of hard to tell you about this, but I reassure you, it solves most of your problems. We usually don't draw like what you described, and we only do CGI on certain projects, but not stuff like Tom and Jerry. There is some blood on our shows, but we usually don't allow this much. The truth is, no, we don't own anything called Deforestation of Jerry, nor have we ever done a short like that. There is Blue Cat Blues, which doesn't involve blood or murder, but it does involve suicide and depression. And that's bad enough. We never hired a Nicholas Fedorov, neither was he involved in any of our projects. This short that you described is probably a fan project, made by this person as a tribute to Tom and Jerry, but that has not yet been confirmed. I appreciate you reaching out to us about this. It helps us be more wary of whatever is on the internet. Yours truly, Sam Register, President of Cartoon Network Studios and Warner Brothers Animation.